What's up, guys? Uh, well, here, back again for another Fight Club prediction. The last one of 2019, as we've got Frankie Edgar against the Korean Zombie in Busan, South, uh, South Korea. It's the UFC are making, I think it's the first time going there, actually. So uh, they're going there with some big Korean fighters on the card, some of the ones that they've got there, uh, and obviously the Korean Zombie in your main event there. And Frankie Edgar coming in here, short notice, he was supposed to fight Sanhagen down at 135 and I think it's the second event of 2020 and that obviously got pulled so yeah uh, coming off pretty rough 245 had some messages Pixman going downhill you're making predictions on things that you don't know what's going to happen so sometimes you get them right and sometimes you get them wrong and I've kind of been getting them wrong recently so yeah I'm going to try and pick that up in 2020 and uh, try and have myself a solid year uh, I just want to say um, a massive thank you across the year. You guys are awesome. You support me through the whole entire thing, subscribing. Uh, my goal for the year was 3,200 subscribers. Top goal was that one. I think I'm just short of it, but I'll probably, I might get there by the end of the year. A couple of things about 2020. The first weekend in 2020, I'll be doing my first show of the year being uh, Looking to the Future, which is looking at future prospects coming in, UFC, Bellator, wherever it may be and early insight will probably be that same weekend as well looking ahead to ufc 246 with uh, conor mcgregor and cowboy your main event in that one there so uh, yeah a couple of new things i'll be i'll be doing some things towards the end of the month looking back at how i did with my picks my bets everything else through there so yeah i'm not going to try and take too much uh, time up with this one here i'm trying to get out a little bit early when my daughter's asleep so i might be a little bit quicker than uh, than usual but um, I'll try and give you some insight with some of the picks there as well. So uh, we're starting off. Uh, let me see. I forgot to get the card ready. Highly Alatang against Ryan uh, Benoit. I've got Ryan Benoit here. I've th actually bet Ryan Benoit. I bet Alatang as a dog last time out, which was a pretty nice dog play. Um, kind of made me sweat for it a little bit. But Ryan Benoit, he's been out, uh, I want to say a couple of years, I think it was, in, in the 2017 when he fought... Uh, Ashkan McTarian where he, where he beat him via a beautiful beautiful head kick seeing that he's been injured I think he had some surgery seeing that he's been in New York working with John Danaher uh, the Danaher death squad I think it is so um, but yeah I like Ryan Benoit in this one Alateng I think I, I just don't think he's really UFC caliber and I just don't think he's all I think he's tough but I don't think his skill sets are, are any better than Ryan Benoit's. I think Benoit's got a lot more experience, fought better guys. Uh, I just think across the fight, I think in many of the areas, he is going to have an advantage here. And I, I just, I really like him in this kind of spot. The only thing that's obviously thrown me off is the two year layoff. But the guy's an experienced, experienced fighter. He has been around a long time. Uh, came from a good camp out of, I think it was Texas. And yeah, when you look at Ali Teng, I mean, what was the big thing he had against the uh, Batgirl takedowns? I still think he could probably get takedowns. I don't think he holds Ben Benoit down there. Um, I mean, Moreno took Ryan down fairly easily. Freddie Serrano took him down. But the guy's dogged, and he gets back to his feet. He throws a lot of strikes. Uh, got a little bit of power for the flyweight division. I I'm going to take uh, Ryan Benoit there to, to win that one. Maybe via TKO, if not a decision. Miranda Granger against Amanda Lemos. I've got Miranda Granger. Um, I liked her UFC debut against Hannah Goldie. A lot of people were on Hannah Goldie in that spot because I think the whole Dana White exposure and um, being on the show. Um, and she came out there, looked good, moved her undefeated record to 7-0. and uh, It was a close-ish fight, but um, I gave it to Miranda. It was more of a stand-up war where it was pretty close when the significant strikes were landed, but I think the shots that she did land were just bigger, better, more powerful shots. Um, Lemos came in there against um, Aldana, who's coming off an absolute... Uh, not Aldana. Um, who am I thinking of? Yeah, Leslie Smith. I'm thinking of the wrong girl here. Oh, this is... Oh, sorry, I've got the kind of wrong girl here. I've been, I've been looking at the girl that this girl fought in Glasgow. 2017, I was thinking mellow, that's what I was thinking. But I remember this fight being really fun because Leslie Smith really kind of got into her stride and really started to kind of deliver some big strikes with elbows and so on. And everybody was starting to get on the side of 
um, Leslie Smith there. She, she kind of got a little bit of a following that week in Glasgow. She was really nice with a lot of the fans and a lot of people were on her side in that one there. She got you sad about Amanda Lemos. I remember she got for steroids as well. So, uh, but interesting to see her coming back here. I think that she, when you look at her record, she's got a mix of uh, some wins via decision. I think she's got some wins via um, submission as well. But I wasn't overly impressed. She was a small, small girl when I remember seeing her um, that fight week. She's like five, five foot three, five foot four. Just really a, a small girl. But. Um, like I said, I like Granger. I've seen her come up through the the kind of, uh, what do you call it? The un no, no, underground, sorry. Um, the regionals. So my head's kind of mincemeat today. Uh, seen her come up through the regionals. Looks really, really decent. Um, I, I just like her in this fight. Like I said, I've not really looked that much into it. I was actually looking, watching the wrong girl, um, if I'm being honest with you, because uh, I, I thought it was Melo I was watching, not Amanda Lemos. Um, so I've got Granger. Whew. This is a fight. This is one I've really struggled with, but ultimately I've went with a guy I think that, um, oh, honestly, it's a really, really, really tough fight for this for me because you've, if you've heard me um, talk about this guy, Hione Barcelos, I rate him really, really highly, but I also really rate Saeed Namagamedov. I think this guy's an absolute killer, and he showed that by going uh, ripping through... Ricardo Hamill, so he pretty much kicked him out of that bantamweight division and sent him up to 145. Uh, looks really, really good. Big for the division. Uh, fluid striking. It just looks really, really good in a lot of aspects of the, the kind of fight game. Two good wins over Scoggins, Ramos. Like I say, that's a big jump. So absolutely ran through him with a spinning back kick and just beat him up pretty badly. Um, and the... The Scoggins fight it was more of a stand-up fight, but he was definitely landing the more strikes, the more uh, the more output, mixed in a takedown in there as well. When you look at Barcelos, I I love Hione Barcelos. I think he is one of the best. Uh, he was at one forty-five. He's now moved down to one thirty-five. I think that's a division for him. But when you look at his opponents in the UFC, and now I know he's got three wins. This is his toughest opponent, in my opinion. Hullabaugh's tough, experienced, gritty. Uh, will land a lot of shots, which he did. Uh, the Gutierrez fight, he's predominantly just a, a striker. Caught him, got him to the ground, and he's got great submission skills. And he, and then the, the Huashin fight, outstruck him. Once he got the fight um, there, caught him with a beautiful elbow, took him out. So, yeah, I think this is a tough fight for both guys. I like Namagamedov, though. I think he can be the more faster, fluid striker. I think that he's. I think that Barcelos can be hit. I think Barcelos wants to get this to the ground. I'm hoping Namagamedov can kind of stuff some shots from Barcelos. If it gets into scrambles, this is when Barcelos maybe catch him. But uh, ultimately, I, I'm going to take a shot inside Namagamedov. Betting wise, I think this betting line should be a little bit closer. So the value, in my opinion, is on side Namagamedov. And I'm thinking whether I'm going to take a shot on him because I think people are going to start jumping on him because of the odds. I think there's a tough card for picking underdogs. So uh, I'm going to go Nama Gamedov. I'm going to go a very, very, very close decision. I think he maybe hurts Barcelos in one of the exchanges and he kind of takes over the fight from there. So um, honestly, being the fan, I think I, I'd, I'd rather have Barcelos win, but I think Nama Gamedov gets it done. Another great fight here, Alessandro Pantoja against Matt Schnell. Matt Schnell's really turned himself into a really dangerous um, fighter his last few fights. You just have to be very, very careful because he's got finishing skills, especially with that choke, um, that triangle choke. He locks it up so quick, and he does it against good guys as well. Smoker and Espinosa are really, really uh, decent fighters. He's really kind of got his confidence, it seems, um, Matt Schnell. I think he's becoming a dad. He sees. I remember watching one of his interviews say that he's he's got something else to kind of focus on, and um, that's really like moved him. And being a dad myself, I remember when I heard that news. You, you want to do the best you can from that, and um, he's did that. I mean, very very close win over in a way. Um, got the smoker submission. Got the Espinosa um, submission. Really, really dangerous fighter, but he's against a really legit black belt here in Pantoja. A black belt who's coming off a bit of a beating that he, he figured uh, he faced at the hands of um, 
Davison. But Figueiredo can do that to you. He can hurt you with so many shots um, and do so many things that he's a hard guy you kind of game plan for um, and you don't want to get hit by him. Schnell's not got the kind of power that's really going to back Pantoja up, I don't think. Schnell's going to want to get into scramble positions where he could potentially catch him with a submission. I think Pantoja is the kind of better overall fighter here. More experience, even though Matt Schnell's got his foot, a fair amount of experience. Uh, better skill set, but I'm not writing off Matt Schnell because Schnell is dangerous. You can see that he's putting in the work with his striking. Uh, he's all around game. He's coming on and being a good fighter. I just think that Pantoja is the better fighter. And if he doesn't get caught, he wins in many of the exchanges here. can probably take the fight to the ground. Just don't get caught in, in some of the submission skills that Schnell does. Um, but he has a legit black belt as Pantoja. So... I'm going to take him there. I've got him parlayed up with... Uh, I've totally forgot. Oh, yeah. I know I've got him parlayed up with so a guy later on. Um, and that one there. So, uh, I will take Pantoja, actually, via submission. I think he get the submission kind of second round, third round there. Dong Yung Ma against uh, Omar Morales. I've got Morales there. I think Dong Yung Ma, he, he was kept around, really, for this kind of career card because he, he's definitely I think he's been kept around predominantly because of that fight with Polo Reyes I think he's got he got more fights in the UFC kind of because of that and I know after that Polo Reyes he lost that when he beat Gomi Damian Brown uh, I, I would have cut him after the last the last loss to, to Scott Holtzman personally I, I think they're looking for ways to to get him out of the UFC in Korea here you've always got to put Korean guys on the card uh, and he was a, a fix that you had to put in there. Morales, uh, not a young kid, like 32, 33, undefeated guy coming off the Dana White Contender Show where he got a lovely TKO in the second round there. I just like what I see. I, I think overall, I think he's got a really good composition of skills from his striking. Uh, I think he can mix it up a little bit. I like his, uh, I just like his overall game. I just think he's a better overall fighter. Just don't... Uh, like come out here guns blazing against someone like Dong Yilma because he can crack, he can hurt you. Um, but ultimately, if if you can get your shots off, he is very, very easy to hit. So I've got Omar Morales to win that one. I just think he's just a, a really... I'm interested to see what he does in the UFC because, like I say, he's undefeated. He's got that confidence an undefeated fighter. But he's not like a young kid. So I'm interested to see how that uh, kind of plays. Uh, uh, like I say, it's, it's a... Potentially tough fight here. I just like what I see from Morales off the bat. So I'm going to pick him via TKO in the second round there. Sung Woo Choi against Suman McTarian. Uh, Sung Woo Choi is kind of dead to me after I thought he was pretty live against Gavin Tucker. And he came out there and really... Uh, Gavin Tucker... To be fair to Gavin Tucker, I really shouldn't take away a lot from, from, from him. Because he actually fought a pretty good fight. I thought Sung Woo Choi really didn't fight all that well. And um, I should have kind of expected that. I think I, I think one of the things I'm looking at 2020 is these people that are taking long layoffs. Like because Tucker obviously took long layoffs uh, after that beating that he faced at Rick Glenn, and he came back striking looked fluid. Uh, went to a new camp obviously at TriStar, got some takedowns, uh, and was just the the better overall fighter and got that submission late in the third round. Moctarian, it's hard to pick a Moctarian in a UFC fight. After his brother kind of lost a, a few there, he came out there, got blasted early against uh, Sadiq Youssef in the middle part of that first round. That was a year ago, so I'm wondering why he's taking the last year off. Had a decent fight against Tyler Diamond on the, the tough show. I, I'm kind of thinking Mctarian's a little live in this one, but it's hard to pick him. So when you look at the, when you, you see them kind of matched up, you've got a, obviously the bigger Korean guy, far bigger reach. But I don't know whether he can actually like use that reach to his advantage, where McTarian might be able to to get some of the fight to the ground, mix it up, make this really really close. So I'm going to take Sung Woo Choi, but uh, this could be very close. I don't think McTarian um, you should really completely write him off in this spot here. But uh, I'm going to pick Sung Woo Choi to win a very kind of close run decision. But it's a McTarian; he could get blew out of there in the first uh, first minute. Cyril Gann against uh, Tanner Bosa. I'm picking Cyril Gann here. I think uh, Bosa's tough. I think he's going to win fights in the UFC. He's just a very tough, durable guy. But I think Cyril Gann is just a better athlete, better striker, better ground guy. Um, 
what I like about Cyril Gunn, he, he predominantly came in as a fighter with people were talking about striking, and he's shown his submission skills in his first two fights against Don Tail Mills, uh, and the first guy whose name I totally... Uh, Pessoa. I was going to say, I was going to forget his name, but Pessoa. Um, so, yeah, I, I thought he looked decent in, in his last fight. He really mixed it up. Um, so I don't know whether he's kind of taking his time with, with spots, but overall, if the UFC take their time with this guy and give him the right type of matchup, this is a, a good matchup for him, then I think they can really build this guy. And they've got some good guys coming through with George Zinho, obviously making his move up there. It's been a big 2019 for him. They do the same with Cyril Gunn. He's going to be a contender probably heading into your late 2020s, maybe the back end of the summer if they match him up properly. I've got Cyril Gunn here. Now... Could he take out Tanner Bosa? I think he could, but I think this is going to go 15 minutes here, so I'm going to pick uh, Cyril Gunn to win that one there. Kyung Ho Khan against uh, Liu Ping Wang. I've got Mr. Perfect. I think it's a really good, favourable matchup at home. You've got a striker in Ping Luang who's coming off that knockout loss to uh, Jonathan Martinez. I, I thought that was going to be a close fight. I think I edged him in that one there, but props to Martinez catching him with a nice knee. I think he's going to be outsized, uh, out-hustled, out-strengthed by someone like uh, Kung Ho Kang, who is very wiry for the division, um, can can mix in his striking with his takedowns, and um, has come off a couple of good wins. The, the submission over Ishihara, and the... It was a split win against Brandon Davis, but I actually thought that it was a bit more... Uh, bit more on the side of, of Kung Kang. I thought he should have maybe won a 29-28, not a split. Um, but coaches see different things. A 3-20, 29-28 is what I should be saying. Uh, it, shouldn't, it shouldn't have been a split in my opinion. But yeah, I've got Kang. I think he's going to muscle this one to the ground. I think he's going to use his submission skills to get it done in that one there. So I'm thinking about parlaying him up with someone. I just need to find the right guy for him. I'm not sure. though. I feel like I want to. Maybe him with uh, Alima Lee McFarlane on the Bellator card. I've been looking at parlaying her with someone as well, so I'll see. Jung Young Park against Mark andre Barrio. Uh, Mark andre Barrio, the, the, one thing I'll, the one thing I will say that he's very, very tough is Barrio, and, and he will fight... Um, He's a tough, he's just a, a tough, hard-nosed fighter. Nothing really stands out with his skill set, but this might be a, a kind of favorable matchup where uh, he's the bigger dude here against Jung Young Park, who has well, really he looks really, really decent on the feet. Uh, throws a lot of kind of winging punches, but he's got some big, big power. You watch his regionals; he'll show you that power. And he threw a lot of output against um, Fluffy Hernandez. But uh, ultimately, he couldn't stop a takedown, and that's kind of the bread and butter of him. A big striker, big power, but can't stop a takedown. Is someone like Barrio going to come in here and take him down? I'm not too sure of that. Um, he did get one against Jotko. He got taken down a couple of times against Andrew Sanchez. That's something he might use here. I don't know what camp he was at um, for this card. If he's went to TriStar, they will try and get him to take this fight to the ground because he might be able to to take him out via ground and pound. Um, oh, close fight. Struggling with this one here. Uh, I'm gonna, I, I've not been overly impressed with Mark andre Barrio in the UFC, so I'm going to take Jung Young Park. I might as well. I'm going to take the, another dog here in Jung Young Park and, and see if he can pull through. But, um, ah, see, that's a tough one. Yeah, I'm going to take Jung Young Park. It, it, it was when I was watching Barrio. It's like he likes to spam you against the fence, throw a lot of strikes, but in an in, in open distance, he he can get caught. So yeah, I'm gonna take Park. Yeah, I don't don't mind that pick at all. So Jung and Park. Uh, I see you guys in the chat there, Dave. What's up, man? Um, Holloway let me down for eleven hundred. On it. Great performance by Volkanovski. Great performance by Volkanovski. I, um, I thought it was a little bit closer than the fifty forty five that the judge said, but uh, ultimately. The right guy won, in my opinion. So, yeah. Da Eun Jung against uh, Mike Rodriguez. I wasn't overly impressed with Da Eun Jung against Kadis Abramov. He uh, got the finish, obviously. Abramov came out there with a 110 uh, punch combination. Gassed himself out. Couldn't do anything after it. Um, and then, once the fight kind of went on, he, he got the finish. Uh, Abramov shown that he's really got... Not great gas tank and will throw in 
until he's absolutely gassed to the hilt. Um, but he got the submission in the third round after, I think it was maybe, I think he was probably up, maybe 1-1. One, one. But, um, yeah, it, it would have been 1-1, one, one, but then got caught uh, and then caught the guillotine in the third round. So, what's up, Mark? I see you, brother. Um, Mike Rodriguez, what I like about him, he, he let me down last time as well. I thought Mike Rodriguez, well, not really let me down. Um, he's another guy who just couldn't stop a takedown. The guy is very, very athletic, big, big power, big strikes. He showed that in the Adam Milstead fight, but he ultimately couldn't stop a takedown. But that fight got turned to a no contest because John Allen popped ridiculously high for steroids. So um, on the feet, he was he was getting hit with a few shots, but he was definitely landing some big shots as well. Uh, and this is where I think that he can, I think he can push uh, Jung against the cage and absolutely land some big strikes. I think he's a big, powerful, athletic guy. I think he could catch Dung Dang Jung. So I'm going to pick uh, Mike Rodriguez for a knockout here in the first two rounds. I think he could, we could see a really big KO here. Um, and he might get underdog odds. I don't know what his odds are right now. I think I looked at that earlier on. I wanted to see what it was. Uh, minus 125. Maybe not get dog odds. But he might get minus 110, depending if money comes in in the Korean in this spot here. But I'll take Mike Rodriguez for the win there. The Korean Superboy is back at Doho Choi after a couple of years against Charles Air Jordan. Uh, nice to see the Korean Superboy back. That guy has given us some great fights. He really has. He's given us some great moments in the UFC. That fight with um, Cub Swanson lives in the memory. And it's always a fight that you should always go back and watch if you get the opportunity because it's he absorbs a lot of shots. He, he catches Cub with a lot of shots. But it gave you an absolute amazing fight away back in 2016, three years ago. Jeez. Um, then he got stopped by the buzzsaw that is Jeremy Stevens. Uh, yeah, I'm interested in this fight. I think it's a, a good good fight for him to come back to. I think that Doho Choi is a possibly a good parlay piece. He might be the guy I'm looking for down the bottom there. I can't remember who else I was going to parlay him with. But, um, yeah, it's favourable. It's a very favourable match-up here. I think Charles Georgian actually really impressed me in his, his uh, debut. He came in short notice against... Uh, Des Green, I thought he gave himself a really, really, really good account in that one. Where um, it was always, he was always losing the fight, but he was very competitive. That's what I can say. He was landing a fair amount of strikes. Couldn't couldn't really stop the takedowns. Des is a big, big, um, strong, lightweight, and um, ultimately that kind of paid. That that's kind of how he won the fight. He won via pretty. Con uh, considerable UD but landed I thought he looked okay I actually thought he looked better in that fight than he did in his regional fight I thought he was a little bit standoffish didn't throw all that much but he seemed to be a bit of a go-getter in that fight I just think he's outgunned here I think um, the Korean Superboy is just too technical for him I think his shots straight shots down the pipe are really going to hurt Jordan I think what I like about Jordan especially from his last fight was his leg kicks I thought he used those really really well but ultimately, I just see this being a really good return for Doho Choi, who I think can be a top 15 guy. I think he was rushed, obviously, a little quick in his UFC tenure. He got those kind of big names a little bit too early. And that slows you down. So the UFC's got to rebuild this guy, especially now they're in Korea, because this guy could be a massive chip um, for them to have. I mean, he went through Puig, um, Cecilia... He's just got beautiful technique and big, big power. And I think that he's ultimately going to crack Charles Jordan and going to absolutely put him uh, out to um, very, very cold in the first round or two. So I'm going to go first round KO for Doho Choi. Co-main event. I've been... I've been kind of struggling with it. Well, not really struggling. Um, ultimately, I was on Volkan Ozdemir to start off with, but more I watch Alexander Rakic, I'm like, this could be the guy that comes up and really gives potentially gives John Jones some problems if he puts it all together. I mean, a lot of these young guys that are coming through at 205 have kind of been found out recently. Oleg Sechuk, Johnny Walker, Dominic Reyes is the only one that hasn't. He's kind of did what he's supposed to do and he now, now he's got he's tickled John Jones's pickle, as John was saying last week, um, and got the title shot in February at 248, I believe it is. Uh, 247, I should say. Um... But Volkimir, we all know 
he's got some power. I I, th I don't really take much consideration into the Latifi win. Latifi, in my opinion, is heading downhill very, very quick. He's moving up to heavyweight division, fighting Derek Lewis. Um, he's really only spams takedowns. If he can't get you down, he, he's a hitting. He's a he's someone there that you can really hit at, and really that's what happened with Volkmir. He he stopped the takedowns, and once he stopped the takedowns or the, the attempts, um, he just absolutely got smashed and got knocked out in the second round. So that's kind of what I'm looking at here. But when you look at Rakic. Um, I've bet on him a couple of times. I'm thinking about betting him in this one here. Uh, I probably missed out the baseline you could possibly get, but I think he's like minus 145 maybe over here in the UK. I could be wrong. Uh, I've not really looked. Um, let me see what is in America. Minus 145 in America. Maybe that's what I was looking at. Um, but yeah, the, the performance against Justin Lede, fantastic. Blew that guy out of the water. Smoked him. That was an absolute smoke show in that fight looked great Devin Clark showed a little bit of the vulnerability in there got hit with a few shots got put down um, but ultimately if he catches you with a big strike he can take you out there in the first round and Devin Clark albeit not being a top guy is tough he's a a good step up fight and that's what Rakic kind of used it for then he moved into the Manama fight uh, and he absolutely blew Manama out the water with an absolute brutal head kick. And he's starting to put it all together. I believe he's been an American top team for this one. Um, and he's a guy on supreme high confidence at the minute. So, yeah, I, I think it, that he can... I, I love his leg kicks. If you watch the Lede fight, that's the one thing that I was like, oh, that guy's really busting him up. He also used his takedowns in that fight. That's something here. I think Uzma's going to come into this fight thinking, this kid's going to stand here and strike with me. And he absolutely could do that. I think if I'm Rakic, I try and mix it up. Put him against the cage. Try and tire him out. Look for takedowns. We've seen that Volkan's not got the greatest takedown defence. If Rakic can get him there, we can see that he's probably got some big ground and pound to stop him. So ultimately, I've got Alexander Rakic. I think I've got him by decision. Uh, I think he'll eat a few shots in this one here. Like I said, I think Ozdemir's powers can overrate, in my opinion. Um, after those quick knockouts but he's got some power there he could hurt Rakic and Rakic has been dropped I just like Rakic I like everything he's putting together um, and like I say he could be one of the next guys that steps up and face John Jones within the next six to nine months uh, I don't see him beating John Jones but I see him being a top five guy for a long time so uh, I've got Alexander Rakic I'll take him via decision in that one in the main event here, we've got um, Frankie Edgar against the Korean zombie Chan Sung Jung. I was not liking Frankie Edgar against Cody Sanhagen one little bit. I thought that was it. obviously him moving down to 135 against a guy like Sanhagen. I was like, that's just bad. Got um, got the call here after Ortega pulled out. I was looking forward to that. I was going to pick Chan Sung Jung against Frankie Edgar, eh, against uh, T City. I thought that was a great matchup because. T said he's got really bad boxing and he eats too many shots and you can't do that against someone like Chan Sung Jung who's very explosive, very powerful. Um, sometimes you don't know what he's going to throw, what he's going to do. And um, yeah, he's still only 32, Chan Sung Jung. Seems like he's been around forever. I remember watching that dude in the WC. He was such a cool guy to watch. Had some wars. But we haven't really seen that much of him in the last, probably since 2013, obviously. He's only had the four fights and then lost to Aldo, knocked out Bermudez. <laughs> buzzer beatered against um, Yaya Rodriguez was about to win that fight uh, but then he came out there and starched a legit guy in Moicano back in J June this year so uh, all, see when I look at this fight I think it's a bad matchup for Frankie Edgar I think he's in for a lot of trouble the one thing that I do worry about is that I think that Chan Sung Jung could potentially get taken down but I, I think that his power shots are really going to start to I, I think they could have fit Frankie Edgar. I think that he's got the length on him. I don't know what the... Uh, let me have a look at the few match up. Let's see what the reach in that disparity is. Uh, 72. So he's got a little bit of reach, but everybody's probably got reach over Frankie Edgar. And his takedown defence, let's see what that is. 75%. That is not all bad. Um, Frankie is obviously going to try and use his good crisp boxing to get in close, tie Chan Sung Jung up. Could potentially get him down a few times. That's where I think that he could win the fight. And Frankie's no no slouch off the at the ground either. So yeah, I've got I've, I've got Korean Zombie. I think he's going to really hurt Frankie Edgar in this spot here. Um, 
I, I, I just think this is going to be huge. I think this crowd's going to be popping for this main event. And I think that the Korean Zombie is really going to bring it home here. I think just Frank Edgar, I think he's reached his peak. I thought that Max Holloway handled him accordingly. Was Not that I'm saying, like, uh, Aldo last week, they were, like, looking for other ways what they're doing, moving down to 135. He, I thought he was a little bit unlucky, actually, last week. I had it from a rise, very, very close. But uh, I thought he, I thought that was the, the most invigorated we've seen Josie Aldo in an absolute long, long time. Frank Edgar, I just don't see him. But he should have probably always been at one thirty-five for the size of him. Fighting at one forty-five, one fifty-five, um, and it's still an, an outright legend. But I just think that he's outgunned here. I think if Chan Sung Jung really gets his confidence striking going quickly. He's really going to come out here. I think he could hurt Frank Edgar and knock him out. So I'm going to take the Korean Zombie via knockout. Actually, I'm going to take it in the first two rounds. I think he, he hurts Frank Edgar with something and he takes him out there. So I've got the Korean Zombie. That's my last picks of 2019, guys. It's been a blast. Been rough in spots. I've had some decent events. Where I've aced the, the card back in the summer there, which was pretty nice. Um, so yeah, but like I say, 2020 first weekend of the year I'm going to be doing looking to the future and I'll tell you who that's going to be very first episode is going to be Saladin Parnes the KSW champion who I expect to be in the UFC in 2020 um, so that will be the first weekend early insight will probably be maybe a, a day or two later looking at UFC 246 Conor McGregor against Donald Cowboy Cerrone thank you for all the help regarding building my channel giving me likes um, just being fantastic I, I, and being on my side. I've had a few tough times this year regarding do I walk away um, because it is a lot of time And I, but you guys have helped me out so much and you've built like this little thing into something I never thought it would be. So uh, I appreciate you. I want to say happy holidays to you all over the Christmas and New Year period. Enjoy this card to finish off the year and let's get back nice and fresh for 2020 and uh, let's see if we can have a better 2020 than... 2019 because 2019 has been i think fairly average so until then guys all the very best enjoy your holidays and i will catch up with you in 2020 all the best